Good morning, Interweb. World Builders Log 15. Today we're going to start colliding stuff together, but first, some follow up. Now, this series, or rather the G Plates portion of this series, has been met with uh, mixed reviews. A lot of people like it, lots of people really, really dislike it, which I get. This is certainly not for everyone. I don't want to alienate a bunch of people, so I'm going to change tact slightly. We are not going to be doing a full simulation now. That is, I'm not going to be taking all these continents, reassembling them on the other side of the globe to create another supercontinent, and then breaking that apart. I'm only going to progress the simulation so far as to demonstrate all the techniques one might need in order to do a full simulation. That way, the value of this series as a tutorial is not diminished, but we also get out of G-plates at the earliest possible time, which, which I think is a good compromise. Let me know what you think in comments. Now off air, just to save a bit of time, I moved the simulation forward another 50 million years. Nothing has happened other than things have moved further apart. Now you'll notice in theory these continents could just keep going and reassemble themselves on the other side of the globe, which is fine, but a little bit unrealistic. Along the way we'd expect them to bump into one another, which would give rise to orogeny, mountain building and cool geography. So to help with this, we're going to need to add subduction zones in between our continents. General tips regarding subduction zones, much like before, we should prefer to add them along coastlines because ocean crust likes to subduct under buoyant continental crust. And in general, the ocean crust surrounding a continent will necessarily be much older and therefore much denser than the newly created crust at mid-ocean ridges. So it will really want to sink. And in general, if your ocean crust gets to about like three, 400 million years old, it's so old and so dense that you should open up new subduction zones. The neat consequence of this is that every couple of time steps, you will be adding subduction zones in between your continents, which will help draw them together a little bit and create cool collisions along the way to reforming a supercontinent. So with that in mind, this northern continent has been rotating around a little bit, which I think is putting pressure on this ocean. So I think I'm going to add a subduction zone along this coastline to draw pink to blue here. Same as before, head on the keyboard to bring up the digitized new polyline tool and simply draw a line. Subduction zone, plate ID of the continent, in this case 300, beginning at 750, going to the distant future, sub 750. Now that is incredibly hard to see, so at this stage we should go down to our subduction zones panel here on the layers panel. If you don't see it, control or command L, twiddle down the drop down arrow, set draw style, single color, and blue. I believe blue is the canonical color for subduction zones. There, much better. Oh, whoops, that doesn't go down to mid-ocean ridge. Hold on, F, select feature I to insert a point, and I'm going to just bring it down to the mid-ocean ridge. Done. Now, so just like in previous videos, we need to cut out everything to the left of this subduction zone, separating it from everything to the right. I'm going to give everything to the left a plate ID of 301, because this would be a fairly short-lived plate. The subduction zone here will also get a plate ID of 301, as will the island arc, and it will follow the same procedure as the previous video. So no new information, time-lapse mode, engaged. Okay, next job is to tell G-Plates what plate ID 301 is. Again, the exact same process as the previous video. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I've called this plate, plate 301, Ocean 1. Doesn't really matter. This plate is not long for this world. Perfect. Now, before we start moving things, notice that our flow lines here, they connect blue and pink together. So this continent with this continent. But now we've created this separate plate in between these two features. So I'm going to reconstruct these flow lines connecting blue and gray here. And the same thing down here, I'm going to reconstruct a portion, actually no, the whole shebang of these flow lines connect green and gray, and then green and pink and then pink and pink. We could do this after we move the continents, but I'll just get all the housekeeping out of the way before we move stuff. Once again, no new information. So to be clear, I'm taking this portion of the rift and saying it connects blue and 301, which is the gray continent, which is gonna come in between these two. going to split this rift again so we can connect gray and green pink and green and then pink and what in the future will also be pink and i'm going to do the same to these little stragglers here as well All right, done. I messed up there slightly towards the end, but all is well. All right, let's get moving stuff. So I'm gonna move these three continents in time-lapse mode, and then I'm gonna do real time for the new stuff here. Again, the key thing with moving continents, watch your speed using the command shift K tool, the kinematics tool, and also watch your flow lines. Adjacent flow lines should not overlap. So I'm going to save up here just in case we mess up and we need to reboot. So let's deal with our new plate first. This plate is an oceanic plate and it is an oceanic plate that is being subducted. Ergo, per our speed charts from previously, it should be moving at about 8 to 20 centimeters per year. 20 is very high, I'd stay away from that. Closer to eight is probably where, where is best. So let's do that. And I'm thinking it's just going to, like I think this continent's gonna head this sort of direction. So I'd imagine this is, this could just head straight into the production zone, I think. Maybe something like that. Yeah, so let's go extreme and let's see how fast that is. 
Command Shift K. We're looking at plate 301, between 750 and 700, correct. Velocity magnitude, correct. Update, it's moving at 11. That's fine, we could slow it down a little bit. Let's say, what happens if we do that? About 8.9, let's put it right at the bottom end, I think. Just cause. Yeah, something like that. So even before we've moved the continent, most of this plate has been subducted. It no longer exists, except for this little part here. Now, before we move this fella, we should deal with this collision. There's an island arc here that is colliding with this continent. So, collisions are in general quite messy processes. So I'd recommend going back to the start of this time step and progressing forward in 10 million year intervals. So 750 to 740. And when the island arc is kind of like half crossed the boundary, stop there and take a note of this island arc's age. So how old is this thing? We'll select it. Island arc was formed at 850 and we're currently at 740. So it's 110 million years old. Recall previously we said that an island arc at about 50 million years old would look a bit like the Aleutian Islands or the Solomon Islands. At around 100 million years, it's about the Philippine Islands. And in the several hundreds of millions of years, it looks like Sumatra. So this is about a Philippines-esque formation. So keeping that in mind, I am going to hit G on the keyboard and I'm gonna draw in along this contact boundary. So from here to like here, an appropriate amount of continental crust that has been accreted due to this island arc collision. Maybe something like that. Let me have a look. S. This is... Mm, it's a hundred odd. And what's that? That's about a thousand. We'd probably go more than that. I would advise going more. More is more in this case. Something like that. So G on the keyboard to bring it back into polygon mode, hit create feature. This is continental crust. Plate ID, it is now attached to uh, this continent with this craton, so that is 300. Beginning time is 740. And this, we're gonna call this uh, accreted terrain at 740. Next, next, and for the first time in a long time, we're gonna create a new folder. So new feature collection, create and save, and I'm gonna save this feature collection as accreted terrain. Cool, now we want this to have the same color as the mainland, so I'm gonna select our accreted terrain, find it in the side panel here, scroll down. Oh no, sorry, that's, that's incorrect. Find the land area. Scroll down and under reconstructed polygons, I'm gonna go add new connection and go accrete a terrain. And then once this appears, we can set the island arc to disappear because it's been accreted. So we're gonna go to edit feature, control to command E and under the valid time tab, I'm gonna say it doesn't continue into distant future. It will finish at 740 and go okay. And we can also do the same for the subduction zone. Perfect. And this may seem like a really trivial thing, but it's really important because that's the way new crust is created through island arcs and then them eventually colliding with continents. And the reason why I say more is more here is that these boundaries here aren't coastlines per se. They're just the extent of the continental crust. So let's say you're creating a world and you're shooting for 30% land area. Well, if even after having accreted tons of island arcs, you're only at 29%, then you've kind of missed your goal a little bit. Whereas if you do it, if you overdo it with the creation, say your modern world ends up having 35% land area at the end of the simulation, you can always just pull your coastline back and use it as an excuse to have extra continental shelf. All right, with that done, let's move this boyo. Now, make sure you're at the correct time step. I am not, I must be at the correct time step, which is 700 here. And let's move this fella. So again, I see him going. How do I see him going? Hmm. Oh, we want him to collide, so we kind of have to force the movement a little bit. So what happens if I move you this way? I'm going to move him forward a little bit, because we still have subduction going on around here. Okay, let's have a look 
with that. Again, checking my flow lines as I go and my speed. Okay, and then let's come in with the sort of lateral movement. Let's see what that does for us. Yeah, something like that. So two things here, whenever a new subduction zone opens, we expect a change in motion of nearby plates. So it's totally fine for this continent to be going more or less northwards, and then it just takes a hard dive. Totally cool. And also notice here at the start of the time step, we have a subduction zone here, a mid ocean ridge here, but no subduction zone in the ocean here. We have subduction, mid ocean ridge, continent. Now, had we a subduction zone here, we would form what's known as a stable conveyor. We get more or less even spreading at the mid-ocean ridge here, and more or less even subduction going on at the subduction zones. The net effect is that that whole system stays stable, and importantly, the mid-ocean ridge remains in between the two subduction zones. But again, we don't have that. What we have is a single subduction zone, and you'll see through the flow lines here that that has the effect of dragging this mid-ocean ridge ever closer to this continent which hopefully in the next time step will mean it will be entirely subducted, which is fun and can lead to Laramide style orogeny. That this ridge is gonna miss our continent somewhat. At the risk of having a really long video, I wanna keep going a little bit. So I'm gonna put in an island arc here, maybe extend the subduction zone down, put in some ocean crust, do drift correction, fix the impending flow line fallout as a result of it. All of that tidy up sort of stuff. This is probably going to be too long even for a time lapse. So I'm just going to do it off camera. Again, like nothing new. All of the basics have been covered already this process so far. So through the magic of YouTube editing, it should look something like this. Let's have a quick gander at the animation. Lovely, very messy, but we'll, we'll sort it out. Let's jump forward a time step to 650 and we'll move some more continents. Now, in an effort to speed up the collision between these two, I'm going to add a subduction zone along here to get this chap moving northward. Maybe something like that. That'll do. That'd be good enough for demonstration purposes. So we'll need to be really mindful of these flow lines here. Things could get real messy. I think this will imply this needs to rotate. So I'm going to plop this fella here. In fact, no. I'm going to move him first. Let's move him out a little bit. Wow, the flow lines are remarkably well behaved. This one is getting into dangerous territory. So let's rotate him a little bit. Cool. Our subducting plate still moving at about 8 centimeters per year. Even though, yes, most of this has subducted, this bit hasn't, and it'll still keep that speed. And boom, our mid ocean ridge now has completely subducted. So given that that's the case, I'm now going to set this entire plate to disappear. And the way you do this in classic tedious G plates fashion, you select each of the segments, go to edit feature, select valid time and say when you want it to disappear. So 650. And you do that for all of them. Fun. <laughs> Okay. 
Cool. Okay, and now this chap. Looking at my floor lines, everything seems gravy. It's happening. Oh, just shy. All right, well, it looks like we'll have collision time in the next video. For now though, let's have a look at this island arc. You were created at 950 million years ago. So it's been around for 300 million years. So this is like Sumatra style island arc. In fact, I reckon it's probably going to be so big. Let me just measure that. That's like 500. Yeah, it's going to be so big that it's just have connected with the mainland completely. I'm thinking something that's maybe between like three and maybe 600 kilometers wide. So let's do something like that. Create feature, continental crust, plate idea of 100, it's stuck to blue here. Accreted terrain at, s well, we'll call it 650. Begins life at 650, and we'll add it to accreted terrains and go create. Could have waited until they're in contact, but you know, may as well do it now. All right, I think I'm gonna stop it there for today. Yeah. We'll do the proper continent, continent collision next time. All right, as always, massive shout out to World Building Pasta, links in the description. This whole series is based upon their methodology. And shout out as well to Van Gogh, resident artist. Oh, and before I forget, there's no flow lines here because I deleted all the old ones to save time. You'll see the ones, the relevant ones pop in in a second. Final shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. You all are the best of nerds. Until next time, a grouse.